welcome to Lilybug's Library. My name is Linda. So coming to you today from the comfy chair. It's a uh, it's a low energy day, and uh, it's um, yeah, it's it's been a challenge lately. Um, for some reason, the fibro is flaring up, and yeah, I'm just exhausted. But um, anyway, I have had time to do a lot of reading, so that's good. Uh, so before we get to that, I did want to tell you about um, a couple of my bingo boards. So I had this one um, that I started the first part of the year, which is a, for Cozy Mysteries. And you can see I've got quite a bit filled out on it, so we're getting close to finishing it. Um, I was trying not to, I mean, I won't say cheat because I'm the one that made it, I can make the rules. But I was trying to make it so that if, like I have one on here that says recipes and one that says culinary, I was trying not to make those the same book. So some of the ones I still have to get are a crafting cozy, a cozy with a bookstore, a flower shop, a vampire cozy, a cafe, a land developer, a cruise or travel cozy, a pet that's not a cat or dog, and went home after a breakup. So I still have quite a, oh, and senior sleuths, I guess I missed that one. So yeah, still have quite a few to do. But um, anyway, we'll get back to our cozies uh, after we have the, our cowboy month. And then the other one, um, I'm still doing Big Book Summer. Um, and I've got the whole summer to do that. So, so far I'm not making much progress on it, but I'm hoping that um, it will, it'll, it'll get done before the summer's over, right? I mean, even if I do it the very last week, it'll still be done. And then I went on to Paperbacks and Ponytails channel last night and they were having a Beaches and Books readathon, and it was so cute that I thought, oh, I can't resist. I mean, isn't that cute? Little sand buckets with, you know, what they're doing. Um, so I'm gonna attempt this. Um, it shouldn't be too bad. There's like a book about friends, a book with an underwater setting, a book you save for later, a book you think will be five stars. I mean, there's, you know, I think it's, it's all pretty doable. So I'm going to try that one. And then on to the books that I actually did read so far this month. Uh, so the first one was called The Cowboy's Daughter. So this one was about a bull rider named Trent and this woman that he had uh, slept with, um, had, you know, one night of romance with, and then she never heard from him again. And she wasn't very happy about that because she also ended up pregnant. And so that's... Um, uh, it wasn't totally his fault because apparently he had an accident with a bull the next day and has spent months in rehabilitation and trying to learn to walk again and get through all of this and also lost his phone. I know if I heard all that, I think I would, uh, I don't think I'd believe any of it, but he also lost his phone and his manager, because Kelly even called his manager, and asked to speak with him, told him why, all of these things. The manager offered her money to go away, and she got mad, of course, and hung up on him. But apparently the manager had had quite a few calls from women claiming these things, and so he didn't really believe her. So all those things kind of worked against them, and then eventually Kelly comes back to the ranch that she grew up on because her father needs her help. And so she ends up meeting Trent again and they kind of, you know, start to figure out what happened and talk about, you know, their lives and his daughter and, you know, all of these things. So it turns out it was, it was actually really good. I mean, it had, had a medium spice to it um, and it had a little bit of insta love, which I, I really don't like. But, um, but overall, I, I enjoyed it and had a really good, satisfactory ending, and uh, I'd give it probably four out of five. So that was that one. And then the next one um, was called Just a Cowboy's Convenient Marriage. That one I DNF'd. Um, I started to read it, and, and I, the premise of it sounded cute because it's this woman who um, is living on this ranch or this house. I don't think it's actually, I'm not sure if it's actually a ranch, but living in this house that um, she is kind of squatting there with the permission of the owner because she's having a hard time. And then the owner's nephew 
comes to town and he is going to take over that house, but he doesn't know that she's living in it. And so his aunt basically tells him that. And so she also tells him that, you know, you guys, I'm not kicking her out and you guys can live there together if you want, but you have to be married. So kind of puts both of them in an awkward position. But every time they meet, before they even know any of this is going on, they're arguing. And it's just, I get it, it's going to be, you know, enemies to lovers or whatever. But they were just really hateful to each other. And I just was not up for it. Um, after two or three chapters, it was like, you know what, I don't care if you guys ever get together. So I was done with that one. You know, I, it could turn out to be a really good book. Um, if you don't mind the bickering, you know, maybe give it a try. But to me, it just was not my type of book. So the next one I read after that um, was Cowboy Seeks a Horse Whisperer. And this one was um, uh, the first in the Eagle Mountain Brothers series. And it has Jesse and uh, Kendra. So Jesse uh, helps to run the ranch with his brothers and they end up rescuing this horse who has been abused. So he really needs a vet and a horse whisperer to kind of see um, you know, if they can help this horse, if they can get him to trust again. Um, and that's what she's really good at. So anyway, she shows up, there's, you know, a, an attraction with the two of them and she's helping the horse and she's also kind of getting to know him. And as the attraction grows, what she didn't know and what he knew, but didn't really believe is that the mountain has called them together. So apparently there is a mountain spirit who likes to reward the families who live on the mountain and take care of the land and take care of the animals. And they do this by there being a call out to the universe for their soulmate and the soulmate comes to them and they live happily ever after, you know? So as they start to, to fall in love, um, he starts to believe more and more in this call and she doesn't even know about it. And then when eventually she does find out, she's pretty skeptical. Uh, so the whole thing is um, uh, kind of part paranormal, part romance. Really well done though. And the characters are adorable. They're all, you know, it's very flirty and fun and, and they're, you know, they're good together. Um, it, a lot of uh, spice in that one as well. Um, so that one I would give a uh, four to five. And it does have, it. it is the first in the series, as I said. So it does continue on from there. Um, so it would be like the next brother and uh, the lady that he meets that's his soulmate. And, you know, they continue on. But uh, but I, I really liked it. And, and I would definitely read another one in that series. So that was good. So the um, next two that I read were actually by someone who's a, a very famous author, but I don't think I've ever read her before. Or if I have, it's been years, but I, I'm not sure if I ever did. Um, anyway, it's Joanna Lindsay, and uh, it was the Callahan Warren series. So I'm not sure if there's more in it than the two books I ended up reading, but the first book was called One Heart to Win, and it's this woman who is supposed to go, well, let's see, it starts out, uh, the woman's parents end up splitting up and the woman takes her um, daughter back east and doesn't want her in the west at all. And, and her sons, uh, she has sons as well. And the sons tend to go back and forth between the mother and father. For whatever reason, the daughter doesn't. And I think it's because um, uh, the west wasn't safe enough maybe. So anyway, she doesn't really have a lot, a uh, lot to do with her father. And when her mother left town with her, she, there's a feud between these two families, the Callahans and the Warrens. And the promise that she made is that when her daughter grew up, uh, she would go back and she would marry one of the Callahans. So it was, you know, to bring the families together and to stop the feud. Nobody even remembers what they're feuding about. It was like way before any of their time, but that's what they're doing. So when she does go back, she, um, she doesn't really feel very good about the whole thing. You know, she's doing it. You know, her mother asked her to, she loves her mother. She's doing what her mother asks, 
but she doesn't really know her father because they haven't really had a lot of interaction. And she doesn't know this guy that she's been arranged to marry. And she knows that her father is, you know, she's a lady. So she knows her father is hiring like servants to, you know, take care of the house and make things better for her while she's there. Anyway, she gets off the train and one of the Callahans is there. And, but he thinks, he doesn't realize that she's the one his brother is supposed to marry. She thinks, he thinks that she is um, like a housekeeper. So he offers her double what the Warrens offered for her to come work for them. So she sees a way out. She sees it as, okay, great. I don't have to see my father right now. He'll think I'm just delayed and I can go check out this family. So that's what she does. But of course, she's never kept house. She just never cooked. She's never done any of these things. She's always had people do it for her. So some of it's quite humorous as they, you know, as she navigates all that and then she gets to, to meet what could be her future husband. And uh, anyway, it's, it's really well done. And I thought it was, was very sweet and um, it would definitely, uh, you know, would definitely read more from Joanna Lindsay. And, and this one, I, I actually um, didn't physically, you know, read it in my hand. It was an a audio book. They both were. Uh, but really enjoyable. And then the second one in the series was called Wildfire in His Arms. And so, sorry, I'm having a breathing problems this morning. Uh, so this one um, involved this gunslinger named Deegan Grant. And he had been on the the callahan farm and kind of been helping to take care of things there so when that was done he went on his way and he met up with this um uh marshall i was trying to think of the right name for it, it was this marshall and i guess he owed the marshall a couple of favors or something so the marshall asked him to look for some of the people on his wanted list and bring them back to be well prosecuted I guess back in those days maybe they'd be hung I don't know but <coughs> excuse me so they ended up uh, he goes and finds um, a couple of them and then he finds one named Max and is ready to take him in and then realizes Max is not a guy and so then there starts this whole process of is he going to turn Max in is Max actually guilty? Um, you know, and they start to have feelings for each other and, and more of the story starts to come out. So it was, again, really well done, really good characters. Um, I like the fact that they fleshed out the relationships. So it wasn't something where they instantly were in love with each other or sometimes, you know, the attraction was there, but there was still a lot to work out. So I appreciated that she took the time to do that. So I would give both of those five out of five. Um, and like I said, I'll, I'll look for more from her because I uh, really enjoyed them. Now, the last one was actually not a cowboy um, book. It was uh, The Phoenix Crown by Kate Quinn and Jamie Chang. And uh, it was one left over from May that we just finished. So I really wanted this to be a five-star read. Um, I've always really liked Kate Quinn's books. Um, I don't think I've ever rated any of them less than five stars, to be quite honest. But this one, I couldn't rate that high. Um, the story is... <laughs> Dudley's going crazy. Uh, the story is about um, four different women, really. Um, there is an opera singer named Gemma who comes from... She ends up in San Francisco. I can't remember where she's coming from. doesn't matter. Anyway, um, she has some problems where she's at, and she decides to, she gets a job with the Metropolitan Opera and moves to San Francisco. So she tells her friend that she's coming, and her friend is supposed to, you know, she's supposed to stay with her friend. Everything's supposed to be great. She gets there, and that person's not there. And everybody just says, oh, she moved on. And so she's, she's really hurt and she's angry. And it's like, what the heck? Like she knew I was coming. And then there's um, one of the women at the boarding house where she goes. Her name is Alice and she's a botanist. 
And so they become friends. And then uh, eventually we do meet the friend that she came to visit. And then there's another woman, Su Ling, who uh, lives in Chinatown. And she's this really good embroidery um, specialist. And she uh, sometimes works dressed as a guy um, just to protect herself. And then other times she's, uh, you know, is dressing as a woman. So anyway, the, the relationship between the women was great. It was, um, you know, they all really had each other's backs when things went bad. Um, you know, they did a really good job of that. Um, two of them end up in a relationship together. They also did a good job with that. Uh, you know, a lot of uh, love and caring. So loved all that part. Um, the whole thing revolved around um, the San Francisco earthquake in 1906, I believe. So that part was um, kind of drove me a little crazy because even at the top of the chapters, it would be like so many hours before the earthquake. And the second half of the book, once the earthquake hit going forward, was really good. Whereas the part before the earthquake, I found dragged a fair bit. So a lot of times at the beginning of the chapter, it'd just be like, oh, just get to the earthquake. But um, the part that really almost made me DNF it in the beginning, to be honest, is there was a lot of uh, technical language. So a lot of things about the opera, um, the you know names of the operas, different things about the singing, um, and it was not easy to read, you know, all, it was like reading a, like I said, a technical manual kind of thing. It was like all these, uh, words in Latin or Italian or whatever. I mean, unless you were an opera star or really were into the opera, it really wouldn't mean much to you. And then they did the same thing with the lady who was a botanist. It was a lot of the scientific names of the plants and all these things. And it's, it was a lot. So for those reasons, um, I would give, I would give maybe three stars to it, uh, the first half of the book, and then maybe three and a half to the second half of the book. Um, altogether, we'll say three and a half. And I would, uh, of course, on Goodreads, round it up to four because Goodreads doesn't do half measures. So that's what I thought of that. Um, it did have, like I said, a, a really good ending. And the relationship between the women were good. I just, uh, there was parts of it I thought could have been kind of um, adjusted a little. For me, anyway. Uh, but uh, still a, a decent rating. And, uh, you know, depending on what your tastes are, you may very well give it five stars. Who knows? So that's what I read over the last couple of weeks. Um, I still got a couple of cowboy books left to go. And uh, probably will find a, a few more along the way. I'm sure my Kindle's full of them. So I hope uh, wherever you are, I hope you have a great day and I hope that you're feeling well and that there's a little bit of sunshine for you to get out and enjoy. All right. Bye-bye, friends.